You say tomato, I say tomato, you say potato, I say potato. Let's call the whole thing off. I knew the choir would come through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not exactly my genre of music generally, but it's, I, I know enough about music. And as I was looking at the scripture lessons for this morning, that song popped into my head for some of these reasons. That notion of having a fight about words. Of course, the song is more about a couple deciding whether they're going to stay together, whether this is going to work out, but they can't even decide how to pronounce the tomato. But they were sitting there with the, what's a good word that St. Paul used? They were wrangling about words. How many of you have ever gotten into a, a wrangling match with people about words? Yeah, sometimes it's, well, sometimes they say, well, what do you mean when you say that? You're like, what do you mean what I mean? I know exactly what I mean when I say this. Or how many of you have experienced in life a word that meant something when you were younger and now means something very different? And if you were to use that word, suddenly you might effectively offend somebody. You might have somebody in your face saying, how dare you say that? And if you weren't aware that the word had changed, you're kind of caught off guard because somebody's now trying to pick up. They think they're trying to correct you, but in fact, they're really trying to fight you. That wrangling of words, we get into arguments all the time about words. Because words are powerful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They can make a point very well. They can be used to start an argument. They can, we can cement ourselves into this is what it means, and there can be no other definition possible. Wrangling. I have a feeling that Timothy, in the church he was trying to lead, must have had too many people wrangling over words. Senator, what do you mean when you say resurrection? What do you mean when you say forgiveness? What do you mean by saying love? And instead of actually living out the faith, it's got a bunch of people saying, oh, faith is nothing but an intellectual game. It's all, it's all what you think and how you perceive a word. And Paul's like, no, that's not true. You need to first off do this to them. When you kind of get them to be quiet, say, I warn you before God. Do not do this. Do not wrangle over words. It does no good. Have you ever been in a circular argument? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Does it do any good? No. no. <laughs> it doesn't. Because whoever you're arguing with has already decided they are not to be moved. And it's just draining. But the same can be true about faith. All of us should have language for our faith. We should be able to tell our story. But we don't need to get into deep theological discussions about what does it mean? It is just about living the story that we take on in baptism. Paul reminds us of this as well. He says, here's what you need to be talking about telling. That if we've been buried with Christ, we will live with him. If we endure, we will reign with him. So we have burial language in our baptism. We're gonna, you're all going to hear it in a little while. We're going to say to Amelia, we're buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. We're going to say that because that's the basic faith right there. A sense of dying to self and being born anew. But that endurance, have you ever found walking the faith sometimes can get tiring? You just let you know you have to keep walking because if you stop, it's going to be the end. So faith is almost a marathon, it's not a sprint. There'll be times when you're running a little faster than others, there'll be times when you're gonna walk really slowly. And yet, that enduring faith is what can sustain you. That's gonna be my hope for my little sister right here. The faith that she's being brought into will be something that can help her endure the ups and downs that life is going to bring. That there'll be that part of feeling alive in Christ that will sustain her. I hope that's true for many of you out there who, for whom the Christian faith is important. You say, yeah, because it sustains me, because I can endure. We're called to live out our faith in action and words. As I said, we do need to be able to tell our story from time to time. Not getting in somebody's grill, getting in a circular argument about it, but just saying, here's my story. Most of our stories start at something about that size. Some of us were about that long. But all of us have had 
a journey with Christ that has brought us to today. With its ups, its downs, its lefts, and its rights. The other part that St. Paul said that caught my attention was this. He said, the word of God is unchained. There again, saying, the words that we use are not stuck. They may look like the same on the paper, but as you experience reading scripture, hearing it, and living out your faith, you sometimes get a new message, don't you? Have you ever been to a Christmas service because you know the Gospel of Luke is coming? And yet that story, for whatever's going on in your life at that point, something else resonates with you and you say, I hadn't noticed that before. And it's not that the words change, but you've changed. You're in a different place than you were before. But because you're enduring, because you've taken on that faith, the word can still speak to you, still inform your decisions, and be a basis on which to try to live your life. We're gonna, there's another part in the baptism that we're going to say for Amelia today. Proclaim, what is it? What is it we say? Christ crucified, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. I don't know how many words you know yet. My hunch is not too many. You're probably good at saying I'm hungry in your own way. But, be, but as your language develops, I hope one of the things that you say often will be that Jesus loves me. This I know. Or the Bible tells me so. The words that matter to you. May they be something that sustains you from this day forward. Ones to which you grow into. Get some new vocabulary because your vocabulary as you get older will increase as well. But the basic words of faith, may they be something that sustains you all the days of your life.